to be working on the block that begins with B4 and B7. The supplies you will need will be your battleizer. We have ours already hooped with step one stitched. You will need fabric one. You will need your prepared piping if you're doing that option. It's fabric two, fabric three, fabric four, and your backing fabric. The threads you will need will be your thread A with a bobbin, thread B with a bobbin, thread C with a bobbin, and thread D with a bobbin. You will also need your wash away thread and your wonder tape. Let's get stitching. Here's our block B4 with our step 1 already stitched onto the battleizer. For step 2, you will place fabric 4 right side up in this location and change your needle thread only to wash away thread and stitch the tack down. Now we're ready to trim step two. Wherever the fabric is on the inside of the block on this particular step, trim leaving a little more than an eighth of an inch. That way if you have a lighter color fabric in the rest of the block, that dark fabric won't show through. On the outside edges, leave about a half an inch. And this inside edge again, leave just a little bit more than one eighth of an inch. The next step on our block is to prepare the piping. You can use a couple of tips that we've learned in preparing your piping on all of your blocks with piping. I like to spray the wrong side of the bias cut fabric with a little bit of spray starch and then have a picture of your block or another block to refer to to determine which direction the curve needs to go. The folded edge on this block needs to face toward the dark green fabric. So with that in mind I will curve my bias strip with the iron, heat it with the iron and press it to press in a curve and this will help it lay flat while we're stitching our block. So now we're ready to apply our prepared piping. I've pre-cut a few maybe half inch long pieces of wonder tape and they will go in the seam allowance of the piping not to extend past that inside uh, stitching from the water soluble thread. So just place a few around there on both sides and after it's all placed we'll peel away the paper backing and then we'll come back and apply the piping. So we're ready to stick our piping down to the fabric. I make sure my folded edge is facing in toward the green fabric and the folded edge will be put right up to that basting line from the wash away thread. And the wonder tape will hold it down and again I check to be sure my fold is facing toward the green fabric. And this is a 5 inch block so it's a little bit smaller curve here. So I will do a couple of snips in, into the piping to make sure it's going to lay flat. Don't go too far, we don't want the snips to extend past our stitching line when the block is finished. Just a couple of snips will help it lay a little bit flatter while you're stitching it down. So we've just uh, finished stitching step number three which was to stitch down our prepared piping. I'm going to trim off the excess seam allowance leaving about a little more than an eighth of an inch because I don't want a lot of dark fabric showing through on my next piece of fabric. So step four is next, we will place fabric one right side up, check it for placement. We will leave the water soluble thread in the needle and we will stitch the tack down. It's time to trim the fabric from step number four. So on the inside edge of the block where fabric meets fabric, we're going to trim that really close as if for applique. 
So our little mini scissors is very nice for this because we can get into those tight little curves. On all the outside edges we will leave at least a half an inch for trimming later. For step 5 we will place fabric 3 right side up in the upper left corner and stitch the tack down stitches. We're now ready to trim the fabric from step 5. So where fabric meets fabric, trim very, very close as if for applique, being careful not to trim the piping that's underneath. This will be covered with a satin stitch later. And we can leave the outside corner as is. For step number six, we will place thread D in the needle only and stitch the decorative satin stitch to cover the raw edges. For step number seven, we will place thread A in the needle only and we will stitch the decorative stitches over the satin stitch. For step number eight, it's time to place the back onto the block. So put your fabric with your right side facing out change to wash away thread in the needle only and baste your block on. For step number nine, we will place thread A in the needle and the bobbin. We will stitch the decorative quilting designed and digitized by master quilter Sharon Chamber. For step number ten, we will place thread B in the needle and the bobbin and we will stitch some decorative stitches. For step number 11, we will place thread C in the needle in the bobbin and stitch more of Sharon's beautiful quilting. For step number 12, the last step, we will place thread D in the needle in the bobbin and stitch the last of the beautiful quilting. So here's a look at our completed block B4, B7, C3, C8, D2, D9, F3, F8, G4, and G7.